All right, hey everyone, it is time for an update and roughly one week until October starts. And uh, as always with October or a new month starting, there will probably be a high profile banner, which will probably be the start of the Warrior of Crystals uh, part two. Uh, the usual pattern from the first series of Warrior Crystals was a the another story gets released a couple weeks earlier and then the actual character comes out after those initial weeks with the another story and it's been roughly about two weeks so that time frame roughly matches up and then we'll be into october with probably some halloween units and uh, or halloween unit more likely as they've only talked about one thus far so i'm assuming that we're probably only getting one this year but Today we're going to be taking a look at the JP update in all of its glories and I'm going to be trying to cover a fair amount of stuff fairly quickly. Alright, so the new vision card has come out and basically it's a overall 10% agility boost to a unit. That's the only thing you're getting. Uh, the vision card itself, 358 HP, 168 magic, about 20 AoE resistance and as you can see there we're also getting 28% dexterity and 24% missile resistance. Pretty good vision card, but pretty good doesn't cut it in an age when there are high profile banners. And the thing also here is just that, I mean, this is a job vision card and job vision cards haven't hit their stride yet. So yeah, this is a pretty easy pass as far as I'm concerned and it's not limited, so you can get it at any time. Cool. Next up, uh, we do have two events, we have, or two new pieces of content on JP. We have a story update as well as a kind of challenged uh, event. Now, it when I originally looked at this, I couldn't remember what this is, but it's basically stacking levels and it's a question of how high you can get with uh, more difficult and more difficult stages. It is tuned towards Thunder Magic, apparently, so globalers who are looking to be ready for this you might want to have some kind of healer and thunder units ready to go on this mission i haven't completed it yet because I just haven't done it busy week uh next thing selection quest for darkness number 14 for the sapphires as you can see i've been very up to date with doing my selection quests but doesn't really matter. Uh, evasion rate increase. Uh, looks like it's also getting some extra stats. Honestly, uh, this is still a unit I don't very much care for. And even now, dark evasion? I don't know, I just don't see it. Uh, Lamega is also just not considered to be that good of a character. So I'm just going to say probably not. Uh, but uh, skipping a bit, you know. Alright, so from here, we're going to talk about master ability twos and first one to talk about is one of my if not my favorite character in votive uh, despite the fact that i just haven't been using her at all recently Lorila, uh who has suffered from just me not getting her enough job points but anyway master ability uh was a increased critical rate i mean now overall she's getting pretty big boost to it uh, i think we went in, we can check, but uh, let's just keep going. 10% uh, HP, charm resistance, critical rate, uh, which is what you had before. Uh, missile attack resistant, penetration of 20, range plus 2. And if she hits a critical attack, it gives her an extra 30% attack. So happy to see that she gets a boost. Uh, whether I think that this is insane, probably not. But the huge amount of range... With another Wind Archer, both of them limited costs, and then you potentially throw in um, Joom, that might be a really good limited team, depending on the cost restrictions. Uh, just thinking about uh, Charisse here. There's a 70 cost, and then you have a 30 cost. You, or sorry, a 50, 50, so 60. Oh, okay. Well, it still should be about 230, so I think you can make it work. Wind range, not as great as ice range, and loses that match quite hard. But, the overall, pretty nice upgrade. Next up, her Master Ability 2's 
everyone's favorite Thunder Mage, no contest whatsoever, Skull, who before got activation time down and magic up. Now he's getting, the, of course, the Thunder Boost for other allies, increased magic for self, uh, and activation, which he had before. Agility, plus 10%, Spirit Penetration, plus 20, and this is the cool thing. 200% chance to ignore a fatal hit when HP is over 70%. Now, that does make him incredibly tanky to go up against because, I mean, so long as his HP is over 70%, he cannot die. But that does mean you need a secondary unit to support him because Skull just doesn't have any really good sources of healing on his own and then you're effectively doing two units. Do you know something that other units can do on one? So my Skahal not very well built. I kind of gave up on him after I kind of gave up on Thunder Magic because I was just going Thunder Physical, and I still don't feel like that's a bad decision. Anyway, Thunder Magic not my primary account, but Skull interesting stuff. But if it's going to be really good, it's going to be corner cases, I think, and not what most people probably want it to be. Next step is Mariel, uh, just this series of units that I've never completed and also just haven't raised her bravery or faith. Eh, just not enough resources at the end of the day some days. All right, so chance of being targeted in AoE resistance is what she had before. Now she's giving uh, HP up and stop resistance for allies. She's also getting 30% HP and increased spirit 40%, remove the effect one, he gets hit three times. Overall, just a general improvement for a tanky base unit, and 40 spirit just off of that is a lot. Uh, we'll make her a very, very specific tank, but she was kind of already that before. There's also a little bit more of a story towards her upgrades, but I feel probably that this is one of my favorites of the series. But we do have one more to talk about. And that is everyone's favorite Halloween ghost, Gargus. And yes, I'm using that comment a lot lately. 30% uh, magic boost, uh, decreased chance of being targeted. And I think that's it. Uh, overall, feels a little underwhelming, but as a um, selection quest unit, these units do have other ways of building themselves up. Gargus has just never been one of my favorite units, and I'm still not a big fan of him, but he does get a secondary buff that we'll talk about in a second here. So yeah, uh, if I'm talking about the Master Ability 2s, feels like a generally good set. Lorila and Mariel end up getting what they need to effectively be better at their jobs, and definitely could see them in a lot of uses or limited cost events, if not potentially maybe even squeaking into some higher costs. Uh, we have I have seen people sometimes use Old Man Blancy, uh, not quite the right name for him, but I'm blanking on his name. Doesn't matter, Kuri. Doesn't matter. Skahal is a probably the best out of all three of them, just because his ability is the most powerful. But without a general way of healing, it feels very limited, and I just don't know if it's really worth it when some other strong units exist already in that element. As for Gargus, no, just, just no. So that covers basically the JP updates, minus one thing, which is to do with job upgrades. I was not even, I had, I guess, missed this news recently, or this news just sprung out of nowhere, but we have another series of job upgrades and that are relevant to the units that we were talking about already, and if I have this set up correctly, that's not the right one. There we go. All right, so here we have, and I have just Google translated this for being a little bit easier to see on screen. So here are our upgrades, Black Mage, Magic Swordsman, Ninja, and Lancer. And this is not 100% accurate, but you're just going to have to, you know, 
put a little bit of pieces together. So Flare now destroys barriers uh, that reduce magic damage. Uh, so that's great. Strong for that. Toad uh, increases activation that Toad will happen, which is kind of neat because Toad feels like something that has been almost completely forgotten. And hopefully we'll see it. Um, Bariga, uh, or, well, one of the fire spells getting changed to a Bromba style, range plus two, up, or sorry, range up to two, and a large damage. As for uh, fire in general, just small to medium. So basically all of the elemental spells are getting increased in how much damage they're doing, which is fair since Black Mage has not felt relevant for a good amount of time. As for support ability, uh, magic power up as well as, or magic attack power up. So just increasing the amount of damage making Black Mage feel a little bit better for a damage based class. Um, Medinia, uh, specifically, her EX job will also be getting a boost. Uh, ice attribute attack up the number of turns uh, and going from small to medium. Uh, other than that, pretty much the same. The hall will be dealing more uh, larger base damage with his EX ability. Uh, Garius will also be getting a very small, uh, or from very small to small for attack resistance down. And Aroga, or Gargus, will also be getting attack resistance down. So a big boost for Black Mages, which is one of the oldest and foundational jobs. Flare is pretty interesting, being able to remove barrier, Toad being able to happen more, and just all the elements getting a little bit of something as well as supports feels way better and should make Black Mage more relevant, but I don't think we're going back to the age of Medina anytime soon. All right. So Magic Swordsman is probably one of the biggest boosts because Magic Swordsman will now be getting a initial AP boost of I think it's about 50% but essentially now uh, characters with Magic Swordsman will get their initial AP up and that's pretty big so uh, let's see so elemental sword attacks will now be getting all elemental debuffs will be removed um, the bra or chicken sword will be getting brave down okay Silent Sword will have an increased chance of activating Silence. Magic Barrier will be greatly reducing magic damage on yourself and reducing magic damage. And Magic Resist will raise the spirit and magic attack resistance of allies within range on themselves for three turns, it looks like. So this, I do believe, is a Frivia boost. And so Globalers probably are pretty interested in this. I Magic Swordsman, I'm almost certain that's the one she has. But anyway, just Magic Swordsman overall, I mean, all of these buffs that they're generally getting feel pretty good, but nothing feels better than just the initial AP. That's a big thing of a problem that this class has had, uh, just not having access to initial AP. So this is a pretty big buff for quite a few characters. Just having more AP at the start means you can do more stuff, do more damage, and that feels good. Next up, Ninja. So the three consecutive damages that are likely to cross critical hits uh, will now have increased critical hit rate. Okay, feels pretty solid. Uh, damage to targets uh, is going up from small to medium, and that is the one that also now will remove a single type, or a single move boost for three turns and can potentially cause stop. So I think it's like... Sh Shadow Bind is the English one. Uh, the Evasion one will now be boosted from one to two turns. That gives greatly increased. Still don't think that's super amazing, but it's not bad either uh, since you're getting that effect for long. Uh, Ketone's EX ability will also be getting a little bit of a boost to greatly reduce healing powers. I'm not ever super sold on removing healing because a lot of the time in three-man teams, you just... Maybe don't even see healing, so it doesn't even matter if the it's an offensive one. But it is a boost, and a boost to be sure. And yes, farm! Farm gets a boost as well. Greatly increase magic attack evasion rate, which is kind of interesting. I would like to see the numbers. Let me just pull that up. 
Because I'm actually just a big farm fan. And I do believe that the data should have been changed. Alright, so I actually do have the numbers here. And here we are looking at an increase of magical evasion. That's 60, which is pretty huge. Uh, it's only for her, but it is a pretty nice buff that's also going with her AoE resistance and magic resistance. I've really loved farm for a long time, so the fact that a lot of her kit is getting boosted, and Ketone, who's also another great character, is getting boosted, feels pretty cool. And our next one is Lancer. Now, Lancer getting a bit of an AP cost reduction on Void Flash, uh, which is also getting a guaranteed it. So that's kind of interesting. And for people who don't remember who some of these are, uh, we're looking at Old, Eileen, and Vern, for example. And I do believe that Glassy, original Glassy, should also be here. No, she's Valkyrie, which is slightly different. Damn. I knew it was a spear-based one that's similar, but that's not it. Anyway, guaranteed hit is very good. Always good for removing e uh, evasion-based enemies. And so even if those if, even if those characters never see use in PvP, PvE content, there are times when you see quite a few evasion characters. So another one for that, uh, and it's cheaper, great. Uh, so medium damage within targets around rage, also a slow effect that reduces CT. Uh, Gift from Hell, which will also give a own CT increase. Uh, that's the one with Death Sentence effect. Nighthawk is going up from a cross to a rhombus with a height difference of 5, which is actually pretty huge. Now it can potentially just get an enemy that is much higher than you, making elevation less of an issue for these characters. Deadly Instinct will now not only give critical rate, but also attack. And now we're getting into specific, specific even boosts. So old will first of all be getting absorb damage dealt from his EX ability. Also cost down. So this is very good for old. Uh, I don't remember him having a ton of survival capabilities, but you know, it is an improvement to him. Eileen, who shout outs to our Eileen fans. I believe Orange Jay is still a fan. After downing targets attack resistance, uh, large damage and penetration, so okay, cool. Uh, feels more in line, but not necessarily insane. And assault formation, greatly increasing attack area resistance now, when HP is over 70% per turns. Burn, I really don't have too much experience with either. So I guess it's just a solid upgrade, but maybe not necessarily the most amazing. So yeah, uh, out of all these, Black Mage, Magic Swordsman, Ninja, and Lancer, personally, I'm the most interested in Ninja, uh, just because some of my favorite characters lie in Ninja, and I love Ninja as a class. It always feels good to see it on a character. Magic Swordsman is also really cool, and probably be the best overall upgrade, because initial AP is just such a good thing to have. As for Black Mage, some cool stuff in there. I don't know if it'll really contribute, seeing how new generation magic users still felt re like insanely further along than this. And as for Lancer, uh, I don't really have complaints about Lancer, but I'm not the most excited about it. It just seems very, very in line with everything else. So yeah, I'm gonna say that Ninja's my favorite. Magic Swordsman feels kind of the overall best. And uh, a couple of solid upgrades anyway. So that's basically going to be my video talking and dealing with all of job upgrades. And uh, remember, just for next week, that we probably won't see news on the JP side till Wednesday. Just because the update will be coming on Friday and we only get updates two days ahead. But October should be a pretty busy month by the looks of it. So anyway. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and see you next time. If I forgot something, oops.